Hi everyone, today for Art Attack we're going to be making these super squiggly snakes. So they're just wooden snakes that we're going to be painting however we would like to. I hope that you really enjoy this craft. Let's get to it. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for Art Attack today. So today we are going to be um, painting a snake. It's a wooden snake and, and as you can see you can make it kind of move. So this is a very, very simple project. Um, it should be pretty fun. Um, and I hope you enjoy. So we're going to go ahead and get started right now. Um, so in your Art Attack kit, you should have received a wooden snake as well as two different colors of acrylic paint. Um, if you have acrylic paint at home that you would prefer to use, that is just fine. Um, but we're going to use purple and orange today. Again, if you have acrylic paint at home and you want to use more than two colors, you are more than welcome to. But I'm going to show you how to do it with two colors today. So I'm going to go ahead and put some paint. Paint dries pretty fast on wood. Um, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and work from the top of the snake down to the bottom um, because I think it, uh, it will dry as I go along. Um, so I'll be able to hold different parts of it while I'm painting other parts. Uh, so I think it'll make it uh, a little bit more simple that way. We're going to try it out. Um, I'm sure that this is one where your hands are going to get messy. So make sure that you have um, some paper towels or something like that handy. So if you get, you know, a little bit of paint on your hands, you could just wipe it off real quick. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take out his little tongue. So his tongue is pretty easy to just pop right out and it's easy to put back in. Um, I just think it'll make it a lot easier to paint him if he doesn't have his little tongue. As you can see, you just pop it right back in. Again, just you can just pull it right out, and then to put it in, you can just, you know, kind of lay it over his mouth, put a finger down, and then you pull it through. So it's pretty easy to get back in there. So I'm going to take that out and put it to the side, and then I'm just going to go ahead and start painting him. So I'm going to start with purple, and as you can see, I have a few different uh, small brushes here. So you're going to want to find some small brushes to use for this project because his little, let's call them scales, are pretty thin. So we don't want to use anything too big or else it'll be really hard to paint the scales one by one. So I'm just going to go ahead and start painting him. And you want to be sure that you're careful when you get up to that edge. So you don't accidentally get onto the next scale. But if you do, it's really no big deal. You could just make a different pattern for your snake. I mean, maybe you want three scales to be one color and then two scales to be a different color and then three scales to be a different color. However you want to do yours is totally up to you. Okay. And you need to be careful around the eyes. I think I just got a little bit of paint on his eye. I think that it shouldn't be too hard to wipe any paint that gets on his eye off because it just looks kind of like a little bead almost. So I don't think it'll be a problem, but I guess we'll have to see. All right, I think I just have a little bit more. Again, just be careful around the eyes. And I definitely think this is one that if you want, you can just do one coat, but I think that this is one that's probably going to look a little bit better 
with two coats. I'm a little surprised because the purple is kind of a darker color, so I thought it would cover pretty well. But there is his head all done. So I'm going to get a paper towel and put this brush over here. Then I'm going to move on to his first little scale here. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to worry about getting inside the scales. I actually think if I did paint in there that it would probably make him not move as nicely. I don't know that for sure, but I just have a feeling he wouldn't move quite as nicely if I put a ton of paint in there. So I'm going to just avoid putting paint in there and I'm just going to go one by one painting each of his scales. And as I said, you want to use a nice small brush for this. Even if you are doing, let's say if I was going to do, you know, three orange scales in a row and then three purple scales in a row, you still want to use a smaller brush um, because it'll just look nicer. Okay. So I am just going to go ahead and keep going. So I have his purple head, his orange scale, and I am going to continue the purple scale now. And if you find that your brush is a little bit frayed, like this one, this brush is a little bit frayed, which wasn't a problem on his head. But makes it a little bit harder on its scale. You can always wash it and kind of reshape it. Or you can use a different brush. It's totally up to you. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So as I'm going along, I'm noticing that it gets a little bit trickier as you get farther along on the snake's body, just because of the way that it curves. So I find that it's easiest if you kind of let the snake kind of flop in the opposite direction um, because then the little scales stay a little bit more separated so it's easily easier to paint them for example so it's like this right now and then if I flip it over then they're separated a little bit better so then it's going to be easier for me to paint this side And like I said, it's no big deal if you get a little bit of paint in between, but I'm trying to avoid it, but it's kind of unavoidable. I have a little bit of paint in between some of my scales, but I think that's okay. That's no big deal. And just take your time. <clears throat> Especially if you're doing like me and you're going opposite colors on every scale. And if you're starting to get impatient or if you want to take a break, it's no big deal. Because he dries so fast, I think the head's almost completely dry at this point. So... If you wanted to take a break, you could put him down and come back later. That is definitely an option. And if he did get a little smudged, you could always go in and fix it up. 
Um, this is pretty simple. Um, you could make it more complicated if you like. Um, as I said, different patterns or if you wanted to add something to it, such as glitter or something like that. I mean, that would be up to you. Or you could just make your sneak kind of simple, like I'm doing. <clears throat> and then I th thought this would be kind of just a fun thing, almost like a fidget type of toy for, you know, when you're doing your homework or something like that, when you're thinking about something and you just kind of need something in your hand. I thought it would be a good idea since we're going back to school. Have something. Kind of fidgety to make. Okay. So his head is pretty well dry. I'm going to be careful still. Um, and I'm going to paint his tail. His tail is pretty long. So we'll see how this goes. It might be kind of tricky. I don't want... In this one, you actually, if you have a bigger brush around, you might want to just go ahead. and get a bigger brush for this part. I'm actually gonna hold on, to, as, as long as I can, I'm gonna hold on to it because it's a little bit sturdier, a little bit easier for me to work with it that way. But you can paint however feels comfortable for you. As I said before, if you need to take some breaks, it might make it actually a lot easier if you take breaks because, um, the paint will be more and more dry. Okay, so I think, okay, let's flip it first. So we'll do the very top and then we'll get to the very bottom. Okay, so now that we are closer to the bottom, now I'm gonna hold on to the snake's head and go ahead and paint that bottom part of the tail. it over. This part really does get tricky. I think this is the hardest part to paint so far, but it wouldn't be as hard if I let the other parts of the sneak dry first. I'm just going to do the bottom part of this tail. And then I think we're all done. Um, after I painted the whole thing, um, I kind of like the way it looks. I don't really want to do a second coat. If you wanted to do a second coat for yours just to make it um, even more opaque, you are welcome to do that. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and paint, you know, maybe more stripes on his tail or something to make it match his body a little bit more, um, you're welcome to do that as well. However you would like to paint it, it's totally up to you and your creativity. Um, I just kind of did the simplest uh, way just to show you some basic tips and tricks for the snake. Um, so we don't want to forget... Once you're done and once the head is well and dry, you can go ahead and put that little tongue back in. So you just, you know, put it over his mouth and then hold the finger over it and then pull it through. And then his tongue's back in his mouth. Um, and then you just let him dry and you can go ahead and, you know, 
make him squiggle and squirm <laughs> all you want. So I hope that you really enjoy painting this snake. Um, if you would like to share your creation with us on our Facebook page or um, tag us on a, your post on Instagram so that we can see your creations, that would be wonderful. Um, and I hope that you liked painting this snake and I hope that I will see you at the next Art Attack. Have a great day.